find a variation on a fly called a polyphicus. Uh, polyphicus. Okay. As Richard said to said to Guido, um, we want you to. to it's not that not, not Guido. Sorry, wrong name. That's Mika. Mika. Sorry. All right. You guys need to spell. You guys need to spell the name at the end of the evening. Right. Okay. Originally, the flyer was tied by a guy by the name of Jonathan Barnes. He's one of the UK competitive anglers. Okay. Now he originally tied it on a. Where is the hook now? It's like a like a 200 BR hook. Uh, you know what it looks like? It's that caddis hook. It's caddis people hook. Right. Basically, it's a gold rub here's here um, with a twist. Okay. His was an extended jig style with the mono filament um, that's melted with the bead hanging off off of the hook. And he had about half an inch sort of uh, ten mil width of mono than the than the bead. Okay. I've changed it slightly. I've turned it into more of a caddis pupa, and I've added a bit of a hot spot with a bit of CDC and a soft tape. Okay. Um, I also tie mine on on a standard, on a normal jig type hook. Right. So tonight we're going to tie a slightly bigger version. Um, I know you guys enjoy fishing the vol. Yeah. Um, Darren, Darren criticizes me because I don't enjoy the vol. You know. Anyway, tonight we're tying it on a size 12 mache jig hook. Okay, with a three millimeter slotted tungsten bead. Um, you guys can cut, tie this in any color variation. I tie it with a um, caddis green hotspot as well as a burnt orange or, or a shot fluorescent orange hotspot. Um, I used it down in the Cape for, for trout. Um, I had a few takes on it. Um, the thing is, fishing down in the Cape, there's not a huge um, variety in terms of caddis, so the main species is a micro caddis species, so fishing something as big as this doesn't really produce. Um, but yeah, I mean I'm pretty sure on the vol it will perform very well. Um, I'm going to try it out now in the blade at the end of the month, so I'll let you guys know how, how it works. Um, the guys overseas seem to, seem to really catch one. So if you're fishing in a, in a fishery that, that does um, hold a good population of caddis, then you know, it's a good, good pattern to use. And as I said, with a 3mm tungsten bead fishing the ball, you know, you're going to get into the future zone very quickly and, and where you should be. So, yeah, let's get started. So, as I said, it's a size 12 mache jig with a 3mm tungsten bead. The tail, once again, is open for variation. I use a soft tackle. Yeah, tonight I think we're going to use either some Orange River or Swanson Franklin. Um, but yeah, you can use uh, Hungarian Partridge, Pheasants, Mallard Flank if you want. And for the tail at least, Mallard Flank might be a bit big for soft tackle. So we start off by taking our thread right down to the bend away and putting in our tail. Uh, I don't tie this fly with the traditional sort of gauge. Um, I tie the tail in sort of half the hook shank, um, more or less. I come forward to, to build up the body. And then I, I put my ribbing in. Once again, you can use anything. On the smaller flies, I tend to use the tag bit of thread that I've used, or a very fine uh, gold wire. Okay, then we move on to the body. Tonight we are using Tonight we are using the Wapsi Awesome Possum, which is a fantastic material if anybody has used it. Um, it dubs very easily, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it dubs easier than rabbits. Um, and I like the colour from the natural possum. Uh, dubbing very very sparsely. Uh, you can always add but you can't necessarily always remove dubbing work our way forward, creating a nice tape of body. Um, this fly, being a caddis imitation, you can make it fatter than you would a, a traditional um, sort of mayfly shape. Um, 
I'm quite generous with, with the, the material. All right, then we counter rib fly. And any of you know why that some people prefer to counter rib as opposed to um, ribbing in the same direction? Uh, yeah, the, 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 they say it binds the material. I, I'm not too sure about that, but I do know your rib sticks out a lot more when you count, count a rib. Okay. From here on, we move to our hotspot. Okay. In this case, we're using the chartreuse. While we add it, if anybody's interested, if you would like, it's quite a short pattern. I have got another pattern that I'd like to show you. It's a very quick pattern, but it shows a new technique in which to tie something. Um, uh, I'm sure you guys are more interested in learning new techniques and patterns. So we start with the, with the thorax. Okay. Firstly, we're going to start by putting in our CBC collar. Okay, there's two ways of doing it. You either tie the CDC in as a soft tackle. Okay, I tie the CDC in by the butt section of the feather. So, and then wind forward. Or, I create a dubbing loop. Okay, I prefer doing the dubbing loop because the CDC stalk is pretty stiff and it tends to obscure the pulmonary of um, the CBC fibers. So for this I'm using tan, you can use olive, in any pattern that you're tying, if you're tying an olive version or tying a black version, you can choose the CBC and soft use the CDC and soft tackle to suit. Uh, I had a pack of a CDC at some point. Here we go. Can you show us the W again? Ah, did I do it too quickly for you? Okay. Right. Okay. There's different ways of tying this. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. All right. So I put place my I pull length of thread off of the bobbin and then fold it over my finger. Now, tie the thread back into where the thread comes out. I go once or twice and then I wrap it around the loop just to tie that loop tightly. If you don't do that, okay, it makes it difficult when pulling tight to try and pull the thread tight down onto the material. By doing this you tighten the loop so that when you when you place your material in here and you the thread binds or clamps down on itself. Okay. We move on. If you've got a bobbin tester, it makes life a hell of a lot easier when tying with a bobbin loop. But yeah, it's up to your own discretion. I mean, you might want to fly that has a little bit more CDC or a little bit less CDC. Um, I usually just put a sp small amount in. So I use two feathers. And then I use just the one side of the feather. I was about to say, I presume it needs to be fairly sparse, otherwise you won't get your sink right. You know what, using uh, such a big um, bead, it's, it's, it's going to nullify the, the floating effect. Um, <laughs> quite frankly, I don't think floating, even with the floating, will have any effect. Okay, so then we twist it a little bit. Fold it back so that you don't trap any fibers. Tie it in. Cool. Looks like a pretty good fly as is. Okay, then we move on to the soft tackle. Soft tackle, we're going to try and find a, a fiber that will sort of um, stick past the bend of the hook about a mil or two. Um, that's an indication of a good size for that. Unfortunately, I don't think many of my feathers, I mean, I brought these in. I'm just going to have to have a look through, through what I've got here to find the correct size feather. 
These are a bit bigger, you might find a few on, on these wings. Um, that one's about right. A lot of people tie soft tackles in differently. Some people will tell you to tie the soft tackle in by the, the, butt, of the, the butt of the feather. So this is the thicker part of the stalk. I tie mine in by the tip. It makes it easier to palmer and it's less stiff so it's easier to use it. So, okay, there we go. You can, I tend, what I, tend, I tend, what I tend to do, I like a sparse soft tackle. I'm not a fan of overly hackled flies, so I will strip down the one side of the feather. So, I always tie my feather in concave side facing the hook, so I will then strip off the top side of the feather. So that when, when winding the feather, I stalk wrapping onto the hook. That piece I tend to leave until the end of the flight until I cut it. In case something pulls loose, we've then still got a, um, a substance to then tie down onto. And we then move on to palmer. When tying in a soft tackle, it's a good idea to always brush everything back. That you get a nice winding forward. Yeah, winding forward. It, it, it dep depends on how you've cut the or at least strip the feather. If you've, if you've left a full feather, it doesn't matter which way you go. But if you have stripped the feather, you want to wind in a direction that will allow the bare part of the feather stalk to, to lie on, on the fly itself. I then move on to fly time. I don't have any of you okay, work finishing the fly. I don't know if any of you know how to work finish with the fingers. I will do it slowly. So those of you that are learning can have a look. I use two. I use two fingers. Some people use three. So I place my two fingers along the thread. I then flip my fingers over. So I've got an upside down four. Can any of you see that? An upside down four. Uh, okay, can't quite see it. But basically, I've done that. Place my my fingers on, and then I twist it round. I've got an upside down four. I then take that same position and rotate my fingers around the hook. Okay, that didn't work. Let's start again. Make sure to mine just tight on your feathers. So you don't it. That's in. <laughs> so I'm going to whip it quickly. Let's do this again. Again, twist your fingers round and then come over the hook. Basically, what you're doing is you're winding the thread on top of itself. It can be quite difficult if you've got split fingers to do this because the thre thread cuts into you. And uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a hot, it's a hot spot um, under the thorax. So you saying you can do green or orange or whatever you want. I mean, your 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 common colours in Caddis pupa are orange, a mustardy colour, uh, quite a bright, uh, quite a bright, a bright yellow or pale yellow, and then you get black pupas, and then your Slightly green, very green, and then mostly 
our, our, our caddis species are either green or orange. Um, they're called a vol, we've got a couple of black ones as well. I'm, I'm not sure the species names, but I've seen black, yellow, and green on the vol. Um, there we go. You want to get stuck into this one, or can I show you the next fly first? Let's start the next one. Show us the next one.